Hello everyone, today I am fitting a subwoofer inside my Toyota MR2 Mark III. If you own an MR2, you will know that there is not much space to fit a subwoofer in one of these cars. You don't have a lot of options. So I've done some homework and I've come up with what I think is a pretty suitable option. It is a Kenwood KSC SW11. They cost around about 90 British pounds in the United Kingdom, so maybe 130 American dollars. It's an active subwoofer, which means that the amplifier is integrated inside uh, the one unit with the speaker, which is handy when dealing with such limited space constraints as I'm dealing with. Uh, it has 150 watts max power. It also comes with a separate remote to control the volume and bass levels. Whereas an independent amplifier normally comes with uh, independent um, power and earth and RCA terminals, uh, this comes with one cable-like loom that fits everything as one plug. And then that is the remote that uh, controls the base. In the end, I hope to fit the subwoofer into the bottom of the storage locker here. I've briefly seen other videos where other models of MR2, maybe American ones, seem to have a flat base in their storage locker. Uh, this is a British MR2 and it has quite a deep recess, so the sub should fit in here quite easily. And it also comes with these ratchet straps to anchor it down. Wired up the front into the back of the head unit is the remote wire and the two RCA leads and also specifically to this subwoofer is a remote volume and bass controller which is fed by this kind of ethernet cable so all four leads go under the carpet and then into the gearbox tunnel down through the gearbox tunnel and then they pop out in the rear locker in this hole right here. So in blue, we've got the remote. Uh, these are the RCA leads. Um, this is that ethernet cable for the remote. And it all bundles up into this single loom, which will plug into the side of the subwoofer. Uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, with a jigsaw, drill a hole in the corner of the bin just here so that this loom can uh, can pop up through it and most of these leads can be uh, hidden under the plastic bin liners. For the power and the earth wires, the power wire just connects to the positive terminal on the battery. Then I ran it around and poked it down into the corner of the firewall there. Then I removed this plastic side skirt, pulled the yellow power wire all the way through and then I found a black rubber grommet in the base of the frame, um, sliced into that with a utility knife and uh, pushed the yellow wire into that where it subsequently goes into the frame of the locker bin when the plastic um, liners are removed. I have a photograph of when I've removed the rear guard for completely different reasons. I was fitting an aftermarket air filter into the corner of the side skirt here and that shows a bit more clearly exactly where that black grommet is. As far as the earth wire is concerned, when the plastic uh, liner is out of the locker, you've got uh, a range of options for earthing out the black wire. I just bolted it to the first um, spare lug that I could find. And here we see in this photo, the rubber grommet is just under the roof drain. Now the power wire, which is that yellow wire there, pops out of the rubber grommet, goes along the uh, floor pan here, up over the gearbox tunnel and under. Now the plastic bin liners are back in. We can see what I'm talking about. Just uh, drilled a hole with a jigsaw in that bottom corner so that the leads can escape. Taking me to this loom plug, which will plug into the sub at the bottom of that bin. And then finally, I can connect this Kenwood subwoofer up. And that is the final result. 
nice and shallow so you can still get uh, luggage in there on top of it if you wanted and when the ignition's on the remote which I haven't found a permanent home for yet lights up blue which is kind of cool so that controls uh, the volume and the frequency and that's it all finished so your Mark 3 MR2 can have a subwoofer if you really want one.